Hello, Valava, and welcome to the very first episode of Once a Warrior. My name is Monte Beatham. I am warrior number 61 of 265 that have worn the colours at first grade level for the Warriors Club. Now, over the course of the year, we're going to have a lot of superstars that come in, some of your absolute fan favourites, some that I've played alongside, or some like you that I've watched from afar and really enjoyed. But tonight, uh, our first ever guest on the show is one that is an absolute legend. Now, that's a term that we normally use loosely, but not with this guy. I think you will all agree. Warrior number one, two, three, Ruben Wiki, Malo Lesui Four. Malo Lava Lesui Four, Mao Malelangi, Mama, Fafate Lava Mole Avanoa, Lo Sunga Fionga, La Uli, Malo Sui Four, Malo Sui Four, Maria. Hey, also, yeah, thank you for having me on this uh, program, bro, and uh, to be the first one, very honored. Uh, mate, you are going to start with a bang. But, Rubes, uh, for the people at home, I, I first came across you in, in 96. I was a fan of yours. I was a young, aspiring junior Kiwi. We are on a, a, a league tour throughout the country. Uh, we played three tests against Papua New Guinea, three against Great Britain. Uh, we played all the curtain raises. And not only did we get a chance to interact with you, which was amazing, mm. but at that stage, you took me under your wing, which was amazing. And then five years later, uh, when I got the call-up to play for the Kiwis, uh, the full-blown Kiwis, you were my roommate and you gave me a Canberra jumper. So I want to say thank you uh, for that time and those really big moments that uh, helped make, shape me as, as a warrior and as a player and as a man uh, early on in my career. Uh, pleasure also, you know, like um, every time we get the opportunity to put their jersey on and it doesn't matter if you're playing junior Kiwis or Kiwis and uh, my approach to it was uh, take anyone under under under, under my wing and, um, you know, makes make things happen. And, uh, you know, I never th saw myself as a, first grade Kiwi as you know we we're all Kiwis there we were representing our country so it was good you know good to get to know the the uh, junior Kiwi boys there and you know our friendships blossomed after that brother absolutely brothers for life okay uh since we're reminiscing let's go back to some of the moments that you had in that in that Warriors jumper because there were plenty of fine moments have a look at this All right, Rubes, uh, you've seen the footage. Uh, what sort of memories does it evoke? And how do you feel when you watch that right back now? Yeah, just watching that little footage there also was like, it gave, gave me some goosebumps, you know, and um, I didn't know, I actually had a little bit of footwork. But uh, I think this is what happens when you happen to be, be in the middle and try and run into these big blokes. You just kind of try and avoid them. But um now some great memories putting on the Warriors jersey, bro. When I came over in two thousand five, um, you know the preseasons were pretty daunting, but um, you know we'll get onto that. But uh, and I think just to play with my countrymen, you know, um, always trying to bash me when I was in the Raiders jersey, jersey against the Warriors, and now I get to you know, side by side with yourself, you know, Arwen, Stacey, and the boys. So um, yeah, it was it was a great um, great innings for me. Well, I don't know if there was much of us bashing you. It seemed to be the other way around. But when you think about you being warrior number one, two, three, you could have simply been warrior number four. And I think about the young uh, boy from Otahu uh, who could have been in that centre as number four uh, warrior. Can you talk us, uh, and briefly, about the moment uh, when you got pinpointed down and you were asked to sign? Yeah, well, there's a, there was a lot of hope, you know, around the Warriors coming to the competition you know in 95 and uh canberra just come off winning the the uh, grand final so you know they're looking for a lot of players to come back to new zealand and start off strong so yeah robson and john money came over to canberra and uh you know had a meeting with them and you know they talked to talk and trying to get this young fellow back to back to new zealand and those days also we didn't have agents so i kind of went on instinct and um you know just signed my john hancock on a piece of paper and didn't know what was actually on there <laughs> and you know things kind of blew up after that and had to change your heart so yeah but it was it was it was a different different time and 
uh, didn't mm. get that legal advice and probably missing home a little bit. And I think the uh, the Warriors coming into the competition was a, yeah. probably a corner for me to come back. Do you and Santa look back on that and, and think what if at, at any stage of your career? Um, yeah, we kind of we, we look at look back at it and kind of summed it up and. You know, when I went over there for a few years to learn the trade of one of the best teams going around in the competition. And I thought, you know, if I do come back, do I go back to hanging out with my mates um, and just not evolving as a, a f football player? So, you know, that's that's why I kind of had a change of heart uh, around that contract time and called on the camera Raiders to come come back for me a, in the, the in the court side of things and um, I think I had a lot more to to learn about the game and myself personally on, on the on the game of rugby league so I think the best opportunity for me was to stay in Australia and then and, and, and there are a lot of many disappointed uh, Warriors fans but you know it's better late than never come 2005 we see you in the uh, Warriors colors but there was a moment there when you're leaving Canberra who you really thought you're going to be a one-time, one-club man. Mm. Uh, but we weren't the only Warriors chasing uh, your signature. No. <laughs> no, no, they weren't also. So there was two There was two contracts on the table and they're both Warrior contracts. Uh, one was the New Zealand Warriors and the other one was the Wigan Warriors. So I had to kind of just weigh up the options. Uh, we had, Santa and I had two beautiful children in, in Canberra. Um, do I bring them home and let them grow up with their cousins or do we travel and see the world at uh, a young age that we were at? But um, I think the best best option was the one that I signed with the Warriors to come home and uh, bring the family home and and hopefully pass on my knowledge of what I learnt in Canberra for those 12 years. Yeah, because I remember Mick Watson coming to us because in 2004 we were in real trouble of, of getting the wooden spoon and we're thinking about leadership the following year um you know i was captain at the time and and he came and spoke to myself and stacy and Owen and they're saying who do we need and i said we need pricey we need uh ruben wiki and uh do you remember some of the vids that we sent over because we went um above and beyond to try and get you here it wasn't just the big money they got you here man because because to be honest i don't remember either uh what were some of those vids <laughs> well the, the video that was sent to me man also with all the um the pleads from yourself, Owen, Stace, uh, just some of the leadership crew at the, at the Warriors at that time. And, um, you know, these are the guys I've actually bled with, you know, in the black and white jersey. And to, um, to, to do this with them, with the Warriors, Warriors jersey, it, uh, it kind of got me over the line, you know. You know, the financial part of it comes, it comes with it. But I think it's more the, like, getting to roll out with my boys, um, week in week out you know not just on the tour so this was a great opportunity to challenge myself and um, rub shoulders with the boys instead of getting bashed by them all the time <laughs> yeah she keeps saying that mate but um it wasn't definitely not that way at all okay bro let's go to some of the absolute big moments and we saw it in the clip before and we've used it in the promos uh when we talk warrior moments there's one now that we're probably still going to see 25 years time set the scene talk us through what was going through your mind and and what happened uh and how you were feeling at the time yeah that's all the other moment was um unexpected it was all you know he was smashing everyone on that day you know he smashed smashed off in he said but he's stopping stop bullying my, you know the, the little boys in the team so um we just come off a try the kick off the crowd were going off it's around that you know the 300 spartan theme and uh the the crowd was chanting Spartan for some reason, so probably due to the others on the on the on the chins. But um, as soon as the kickoff came to me, months I won't I won't lie, um, I was yelling Spartan when I ran, actually ran the ball at uh, Soliola, Sam Parrot, and um, whoever the back row was. So it was either me I was going to get funged or one of them. So. I'm, I'm glad it was one of them and it was one of my good mates too so we always have a laugh about it and but i was i was concerned for see after that um as you do it's you know we we play hard but you know we still have that care factor yeah. but um as soon as he came right i ran at him again <laughs> that's the way when, it is when, when you see those moments and we see them often um how do you feel and and, and how do your 
people that are close to you, like your kids, what, what, what do they say about that moment? Because it's a, an iconic moment in, in the Warriors yeah. history forever. Well, there's, there's different um, emotions on that one. The kids love it. The the supporters love it. You know, the, the players get a get a, a thrill out of it and they thrive off moments like that. And I'm, I'm glad I could do something to um, inspire them to follow my lead, you know, without saying any words. When we go back to earlier in the year, in 2008, there was a lot of injuries. Uh, Wade McKinnon, uh, there was Pricey, Manu, uh, Jerome, uh, Brock Lutzi was injured. Uh, Witt, Witty was was out for a little while. Uh, and, and when you think about leadership, uh, when the chips are down and what you need to do, just like you mentioned then, you, you, you need to change the thinking. Uh, you got caught into the office uh, and you're probably thinking, okay, I, I need that leadership to come forward. Can you talk to me about how you were caught into the office and then talk to me about that moment and realisation uh, when it wasn't what you thought you were there for? Yeah, we've um, this is an untouched story. This this one uh, untold story story and uh, something that's probably uh, that I can um, vouch and let everyone know that uh, I thought I was I was doing okay and through the the time of the injuries that we had also and it's just like the, you know I've come into the office. John Hart was there, Wayne Scarra, uh, Ivan Cleary was the coach back then, and um, you know we were going for a, a bit of a losing streak and um, they kind of asked me to. Uh, for for me to retire, and I, you know, I thought to myself, huh? How how am I the one to you know be the one to told not to play for this club again? So I had to let that process first, and kind of ask them the question, why why is you know why are you guys are getting rid of me? It's, the season's not even over. You know, my, I was on my last my last year at the club. Um, I, I was feeling good. I had a good preseason. You know, through the injuries, I was trying to lead as much as I could. And, um, yeah, they, they weren't going to play me. So um, what was going through your mind? What was on that car ride on the way home? What were you thinking? And then how did you break that news to Santa? Because it wouldn't have been easy for anyone. Mm, all right. So in that um, that moment there also, I was pretty angry. Um, you know, my, my fists were clenched and... Um, yeah, it could have got ugly, but I was, you know, I had to hold my composure and, um, you know, break this to the wife. You know, how am I going to tell this to the to the wife, uh, the news? And there's no lie, there was a bit of depression also on that uh, due to been playing the game for so long and come to 2008, being told that uh, I'm not wanted. Um, I said, you know, what have I done wrong, you know? And um, wow. and I, I con you know, I'd spoke to Santa. She came come back to the club. She gave her peace of mind, and it was ugly that for a week, you know, and wasn't wanted at the club. They were never going to pick me in first grade again. So I said, "Well, sweet, I'll go back and play local and just try and win my spot back." Uh, so I ended up playing reserve grade. Uh, for the Vulcans, had a great time down there. Then I called on some people that I trust um, for advice because I went through a bit of a lull um, and then asked them, you know, what should I do in this situation? So, uh, you know, I rung Frank Endicott, uh, my good friend, my good mate, Logan Swan, um, I spoke to Santa, and uh, Louis McLennan as well. So... I kind of just asked him, you know, what should I, what should I do? I said, you know, they just they just told me to be myself and don't give them that fuel, you know, to feed off. Just be happy, oh. uh, be there for the boys. I addressed the boys about it also, and they they lost their shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. and um, they wanted to go on, you know, on strike due to me not being in the team. I I told them. It's, it's bigger than me, man. You guys are going to st still play the games. And um, I just wanted them to know. Um, then they had a few more injuries also and then got called back to mm. play. Because this is the story, and this is why we touch on this, because you had a lot of wonderful moments and your stats are just unrivaled anywhere. But stats are one thing, but having to go through that adversity and have these real-life situations like this in, in, in what was meant to be uh, the celebration year for you, uh, must have been tough. Uh, so what were you doing in yourself 
uh, to put that aside after these conversations and then get the ball rolling, rolling with the team? Because we know the Bears were a big thing. Um, how did you day by day just get that going? Because there was a remarkable run uh, in terms of getting some wins together. Yeah, well, so, you know, special things are made when everyone's going in the same direction, right? So the you know the beards were growing for for that uh, for that run. Um, we had a bit of resistance from a few players, but they ended up doing it. So they ended up growing the beard. <laughs> so you can touch on those guys now, but um, <laughs> but you know it was something special. Also, and I think that as soon as I came back into first grade, man, things just just went crazy. I was enjoying my training. I was still smashing everyone and with a smile um, and they were, everyone was feeding off it and they knew the situation um, they knew what the hierarchies try to do so they just we just wanted to focus on the ones that are actually on the field and we did that every week and um, man it was it was a great ride this there's sometimes in your lives or in your careers things just all click and mm. when everyone plays plays their part in the game, in the in their um, in the plan, it just makes everyone else's job so much easier, you know. So, and we we you know we kept everyone accountable. You know me also. It's you know you miss a tackle, I'll, I'll tell you. And if I miss a tackle, they'll tell me. So that's that's the um, you know that's that's the connection we had. And I think in that that certain time, we wanted to do everything for each other and I think that's uh, what made it so special and if we could like bottle all that up for the whole season there'd be a lot of premierships at, at, at the Warriors mm. <laughs> but it's, mm. it's you know you need a bit of luck uh, you need the, the bounce of the ball uh, the refs call you need all that but um, yeah. you, you still gotta have that team that's going in the same direction We've also got to talk about this week's team. It is round one. It is the Warriors versus St. George Dragons. You can watch it all yes. live here on Sky Sport. Uh, this is the team. This is what it looks like. Um, both you and I, obviously, we're not going to talk about uh, fullback position and uh, Chanel Harris. <laughs> um, it's, it's out of our jurisdiction, man. It's not for us. You wanted to talk about Bunty a little bit in terms of what he's about uh, because, you know, he's, he's spent a little bit of time with you in, in those um, mm. dangerous rehab groups. Yeah, also no, I I had Bunty for a couple of years, and um, you know Bunt, Bunty just does his job and he just gets on without without um, without any malice, you know. And for him coming to the end of his contract, he had to look at the bigger picture uh, for his family. So he, he took you know went to the office and you know hit them up and to see what was going on, and and they told him. So you know he he had to work hard to get out of rehab. So. He could show them something, you know, and then they took him over to to Australia, and uh, he hasn't looked back. And um, hard work in front row, just no nonsense, old school Hydro Orcasini man, just doing the job for the team. And uh, I'm I'm glad he's back, back in the you know, back in the starting lineup, and um, he he will not uh, let the team down. That's for sure. Josh Curran, um, look, he's 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 been in uh, the Indigenous Games for the, the last two seasons to start the year off. Um, what he did last year was. Uh, sensational. He is not uh, mm. you, you, your typical back row in terms of the physique. He's not a Sonny Bill Williams, but what he's been doing for this team being amazing. You spent some time with him as well. <laughs> Another one that was in the rehab rehab crew of uh, Uncle Rubes. So, um, you know, you know, we talk about his body shape different to Sonny Bill, but uh, he can play some footy. And he was always had, you know, 20 questions. And, uh, you know, I told him, mate, this is this is where you make your mark, bro. Rehab. You want to get out of rehab. You don't want to be staying in rehab. So when you get the opportunity to get out, don't come back, because I was just making worse. Yeah. So um, and then it is full of questions. And I always praise on his performances last year. I always give him a text. He always, you know, texts me back and say thanks. You know, thanks for pushing me in the in the rehab. He's, you know, he's got a bit of a character. I and mean, I think um, for all the hard work he's done with the Warriors, he's getting the rewards. You know, playing with the indigenous teams and but he still remembers those rehab crews and doesn't want to come back to um uncle Roos, no. for sure just the one game of preseason. it was against melbourne storm it was a win um sean didn't play uh i guess is that enough what's what's the importance of a preseason? because i remember kevin campion used to say don't get injured 
when you played, he'd always want me to play and not play so so hard in preseason. Uh, yet when you played in the game, he was uh, fierce. Uh, the importance of preseason for you? You need the you need that base in preseason. I think uh, with the preseason training plus a few games, just just to get your timing right. And uh, depending what the coach wants to do, if he's bulking you up or making you lighter, you got to oh. adapt to that that weight you're actually been put at. So or you're, you've lost the weight. So it's taking the hits, getting get back up. And go again. So I think um, just getting the uh, chemistry right for the preseason training, put mm. onto the onto the field through the preseason games, and your, mm. you know your timing, timing running the holes and making your tackles and and so forth. So um, yeah, very important. If you don't get a preseason under your belt, you're going to struggle and probably won't see yourself coming right until probably round four or five. Yeah. So you need you need your, you need the mileage juice. Rube, just in that, where do you get your confidence from? You're in the last huddle or you're sitting down, uh, getting addressed by uh, the captain or also the coach. Where do you get your confidence from when you look around the room? Just before we go out. Just before we go out. When the, all the talk is done, you can just look into someone's eyes. Well, like just look around and you get that same, that same stare back. Then you know that it runs on. If you see a couple of people wandering, then you're going to actually keep them on their toes during the game. So that's that's what I look for, you know, and I think we've done that a, a few, uh, you know, lots of times in our in our battles, and I know we're on. I know you're on all the time, and and if I sense someone's off, you know, I'll have a word to them, you know. I also want to get into uh, about you, Ruben Wiki, in terms of up to now, man. Uh, what what are you doing? Oh, I'm running a gym now, also like uh, back in India, two seven four, like where it all began. It's just come full circle. So Santa and I have been um, been running a gym for the last three years at the heart of Otara. We started back in two thousand eight. So when the um, my contract kind of ran out, but trying through that, doing some group fitness, and it kind of just evolved after that. Um, just getting involved in the community as much as I can, having a having a hub in Otara with all the constraints, you know, that's going on around at the moment, you know, so we have to, I think it was just our calling to come back home, you know, when we look for a, a, a building and it was situated in Otara. And, um, where, where did they find your ribs? Wikiworks.co.nz? Correct, sir. Correct. So if you want to go on some wiki love and uh, find out what those rehab boys, don't come see me, go see Santa. Obviously, when you've been a full-time professional league player, um, you go one of two ways when you come out. Uh, you either continue with it or you don't, and you can go so far the other way. Why is it of importance to you, and and what does it do for you to be fighting fit? For me, it's for my well-being also because I've always, like, from day dot, like, growing up in Otara, running everywhere. You know, if you had mates in Mangere, guess what? You have to run there. So that same mentality is still still very strong at 49 so um i know if i have a cheat meal you know what i'm doing i'm doing some kicks or something so uh, but i've got to just got to get the balance right and um my wife thinks i'm nuts but um you know i'm in iso and i i just can't stay still and it, it, it just keeps me in in line with everything in the universe bro so i need to train so yeah. it's just just for myself and um so I can give positive energy to our, our people. Well, once a warrior, always a warrior. That's a saying we have amongst our 265, seem to be 266 warriors that have represented the club at first grade level. Uh, Ruben, on behalf of everyone that's been involved in the club and watched and admired of you over the years, thank you very much for what you've done in the colours. Pleasure also, and it's always uh, good to see you, mate. Well, if you enjoyed Ruben, uh, join us next week because our next guest is someone who's got a little bit more of a haircut like myself. Uh, that is Owen Goodenbeel.